So let me go ahead and bring uh, our awesome uh, Vince back here. Vince, how's it going? We got Destiny. We've got uh, Sherry here. How's it going? And who else do we got? We got Roboido. Robert, uh, how's it going? All right. So good. I got. What what movie was that from? First of all, the Roboido. Um, <laughs> Water boy. I don't know. Water boy. Water boy. I like Water that. Boy. Yeah, that, there's like Favorite. a stepfather or something like that, right? That, that's so a random. Like Adam Sandler fan. There you go. All right. So, <laughs> uh, you guys all have uh, reputations that that precede you. Um, uh, knowing PPC, and it's it's really an honor to to have you guys on here. Uh, I'm gonna hop off in a little bit because I haven't eaten anything in about eight hours. But uh, I just wanted to just go over the one thing I uh, wanted to ask just really quick each of you since this is kind of a not round table but kind of a rectangle table here um ppc during coronavirus what is your advice for what people should and shouldn't do uh vince we already heard from this morning so i'm just going to go first to uh destiny yeah for sure biggest advice is do what's best for your brand not what all the gurus are out there posting um we have some brands in certain categories that have been hit with inventory restrictions that's going to be a whole different round of changes than a brand that's not seeing shipping delays. So the biggest thing I can say is look at smaller, more recent data sets, pull your business report every week, make sure you're checking conversion. If you see any crazy changes in conversion, make the appropriate changes to your PPC and watch sponsor brands closely. You could have one product have a major delay. It's going to really affect your whole headline search ad. So that's thanks. Awesome. Awesome. Robert. Yeah, I think the biggest thing that we've really seen is there's been fluctuations with the PPE programs, people getting money, people feeling like they're going to be laid off, they're not going to be laid off. We've seen PPC ebbing and flowing between non-essentials to essentials. So we re we represent clients from essentials to non-essentials, everything from uh, gardening equipment all the way up to women's apparel and fashion accessories. So there's so much variability by, based on the client and the category. I think the biggest thing that we've really seen is we are a buffer for our clients. And we are kind of the voice of reason. Don't just shut everything off because things are fluctuating. You need to make <laughs> proper adjustments. You need to really focus in on those auto campaigns that weren't working all of a sudden and that all of a sudden shot up with their ACOS. And you really need to focus on what works. You really need to go back to the basics, understand there's negatives that you have to apply into all of your campaigns. The things you got away with probably a few months back, yeah, it's going to kill you. Um, the biggest thing that we've really seen with some of our clients that sell in essentials right now is the traffic is out of control. So you really have to be hyper-focused on the long tail, not the short tail. If you're going after one and two word search terms in your broad campaigns, you're going to get crushed. The traffic and the CPCs and the non-conversions in those are just killer. So you really have to focus on the really hyper-focused long tail. And if you do that, the conversion rates and the click-through rates are amazing right now. So that's really what we're seeing. Awesome. Thank you for that, Robert. And we got uh, the urban cowgirl herself, Missy Vet. How's it going? What's your advice for what you, you see based on what you see with your clients and, and, and everybody else? Well, I mean, I think the main thing for me, because I've been doing this like nearly 18 years, I kind of feel like it's just the long game because I was here in the last recession. Now, it wasn't coronavirus by any stretch, right? So this is like a really big deal even for me just like to kind of weather it. But, you know, being in the last recession and like kind of taking those markets even through the hard times and coming out better on the other side. So I have this view of playing the long game and kind of staying there. But at the same time, I think you want to really double down on profitability. I think you need to understand your profitability metrics, you know, track T costs. You know, we track T ROAS, which is kind of how much you're selling overall for every dollar spent on ads. Instead of cutting back on spend, be looking to kind of maximize your spend. So we're doing a lot with, um, you know, like on your detail page, you can get into brand analytics or one of those tools and you can look at like a, a basket analysis and, and look at, you know, what's going in the basket from your own product catalog and then what they're comparing it to. And then you can kind of build out all of your sponsored product carousel, product targeting. You can do your... And, um, you know, there's new sponsored brand placements on the detail pages. It, there's new product display and sponsor display below the buy box. Um, so you can really work on like making every dollar count, like focusing on upselling other products, making the cart higher versus reducing spend so that you can keep investing in the keywords that are going to play the long game. Awesome. I love it. Uh, I'm just like overflowing with information right here. Who's <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> 
uh, I, I was hungry, but, but you guys just fed me so much. <laughs> like now I'm full. So I, I don't know. Maybe I don't need to eat. But I'm, I'm going to hop off here. Vince, if you can just go ahead and lead the uh, lead the roundtable here. I might jump on a, a little bit later, and I'll start throwing up uh, questions from the audience. Can everybody see, like, if I if I were to put a – actually, this is a nice sentiment right here. So uh, do you guys see the question that I'm throwing <laughs> up here on the bottom? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you can't see. All right. All right. I just want to make you sure can. that you can see it. So I'll, I'll come up here a little bit later, maybe off camera, and I'll start throwing up some questions uh, in a little bit. But Vince, take it away, sir. Yeah. I just figured out how to do it as well. So <laughs> 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 it's great to see all of you guys. Thank you so much for for joining on. Some of you very last minute. Um, I, so I just want to let everyone know that I, I used to work with Robert before I started working for Helium 10. For those of you who are just coming on who don't know me, I am the uh, project manager product manager for ads, which is our PPC tool that we're building out here at Helium 10. Um, spent two and a half years consulting, uh, last two years before coming on board specifically on uh, Amazon PPC. And Robert was my last agency client. And uh, Cherie, you don't know this, but before I started working here, after I had seen you at SellerCon in uh, uh, July last year, um, I actually almost applied for a, a role that you had on Upwork. <laughs> And I only knew it was you because of the language. It was all about wild, wild west and cowgirls and things like that. So, um, so it's cool to have you guys both on here. Um, what kind of things have you guys seen that have surprised you? I know you uh, you said gardening and you said and you had all the way through to women's apparel. What other uh, Destiny or Shri? What, what kind of products have you seen that have shot up that, that surprised you, or things that you thought would work that haven't over the past few weeks? I'll let you go first, Destiny. <laughs> um, we actually have a really top of the category medical brands. So we saw over 500% year over year growth with that. Uh, we hit close to 20 million when we really started hitting that peak. So that was probably uh, one of the biggest just cases of growth. Like we all knew that people were purchasing it, but seeing it scale from, you know, 3 million last year to hitting those numbers was really cool. Um, products in the sexual category has probably been one of the <laughs> best to watch. So you can run sponsored brands and you can actually run video and search as well. So mm -hmm. we thankfully got those up beforehand. And that has been like, if you want to have fun, like log into that search term report and look at what people are searching. So that we've seen crazy growth in that account as well. Awesome. That's awesome. And that's so funny when you bring up the sexual stuff, because we had our financial analysts, like the day this whole thing hit, I'm just like, oh, I want to see all the data, pull all the brand analytics data, you know, put it upside down, put it, I want to see everything, right? This is such a trip because <laughs> it was like, it's gotten really bad. But at the same time, when it first started, it was like all this like toilet paper and hand sanitizer. It was just like the whole thing just like, you know, just flipped. And I'd never seen anything like it in all my years of search, right? And I was like, oh my gosh pull that up. And we had jokes about that too. Like people just go across all these categories, you know, like they're like, I'll get a bag of rice and then I'm going to get some sanitizer <laughs> and then I'm going to get a sex toy. And I must have made like a hundred jokes in the ad meetings with my team. Like, oh my gosh, it's like uh, I can imagine. a database, but it goes from like food to like hazmat suits to toys. I'm yes. sure you killed it. I don't have any clients in that category, but it's definitely in demand. So that's what awesome. people deem necessary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, you know, all of our accounts, I have to say the, the only account that's really taken a hit in, in our roster is fitness. Um, but they're more mm. of like a real like muscle kind of, you know, like GNC competitor. So I think that their, their guys go to the gym. Right. So I think it's more of like a hardcore muscle building group. So for some reason, I can't seem to get that product back over the curve. Um, but I've found like that people at home, you know, we of course have, you know, some of the, the, the larger brands like number two in home and kitchen. And I find that we just are staying there. I find that people are doubling down on their home purchases. So if mm. you're in home, I think it's because people are nesting and then we're all, you know, quarantined and, you know, you're looking around your house and for those of us that do this, we're used to that. Like to me, it's like just my life, <laughs> but there's a lot of new people that are kind of cooped up. And I think we're seeing a lot in home. Um, again, we're, we're pretty much seeing good growth across everything. Everything looks really solid. Um, that's why I just don't think you want to retreat on your spend as much as, but I am really focused because of what might come up economically around the bend. I'm very focused on profitability and I've been really kind of leaning hard, um, and going strong on profitability for more than a year. Cause as the platform matures, which you know, hmm. mature now, you know, it's easier to lose money than make it. And you really like, just like Robert was saying, you got to track it. Like you got to look at like your auto 
avocado waste. Uh, you got to look at like, like Destiny's saying, like your sponsored brands waste. You got to really track waste because like you don't want to make all your money in one spot and then lose it somewhere else. And that's super messy in advertising. You know, you want to make the money and keep the money. It's about creating profit. That's what competitive strategy is, is profitability strategy. So mm -hmm. I go really hard on like focusing on your profit metrics. Don't try to like over bet on more sales at the cost of profits. Uh, just try to really push for velocity. But all markets are going pretty good. I just, I Great. think there's just a few that are affected <laughs> by the lockdown. Yeah, so uh, let's answer some uh, uh, questions here from some of our viewers here. Um, right now, there's a lot of people that are new to Amazon. Um, what are your suggestions for how to how to start uh, PPC campaigns effectively, like right now in this climate? Do you want me to jump in? Yeah, go I'll for jump it. On in. I mean, really, right now, we've actually found this as a really good testing time. Because mm -hmm. a lot of the old data, the big problem is when you run a lot of your normal optimizations off of data, it's really not relevant to the times now. And things are changing literally by the day and so much faster to where you used to do three and five day sales attributions to give some ads time. Right now we're seeing it, I mean, literally by the hour in some cases. So we've actually been doing a lot more testing than not. And we've been actually even more aggressive in a lot of our categories in terms of you really need to do some manual searches. It's not just the typical, you know, using your ad softwares and keyword softwares and things like that to see what is out of stock on these search terms. Because for mm -hmm. some of these essential items, there's perfect, there's gold mines out there with people searching for these products that are sitting there and they're completely sold out, but these people just want the product. And we're right. seeing that actually even across not non-essential categories a lot of times. And people are becoming more comfortable on Amazon shopping on Amazon because it's really the only place to shop. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, we really see this as, as a whole. The biggest thing that we're really trying to do is actually A and B test uh, the flexibility of the platform. So our company offers drop shipping to our clients to, to provide flexibility for merchant fulfilled as well as FBA. And we, you know, as things changed and they started showing four week ship times, we were able to on the fly ship to merchant fulfilled and test the conversion rates. And we were actually seeing higher conversion rates with Merchant Fulfilled because it was showing quicker ship times. Um, it's very unusual on Amazon to be able to see that, but because people are in such high demand to get the products that they're looking for on Amazon, we were able to do that on the fly for a lot of our clients, increase our ad spend and actually increase our profitability because we were able to add shipping costs on those low cost essential items. Nice. Destiny? Yeah, I think the biggest thing to kind of tie into a lot of the other questions that are being asked as well. Um, if you're really new to PPC, start with much smaller groups of targeting and yeah. don't try to target 900 keywords. I mean, do the yeah. math. If you're having First, to bid yeah. a dollar across 100 keywords, we recommend, you know, six to eight clicks before you can even make an optimization. That's going to be a lot of spend up front. So people who are starting um, brand new, smaller targeting, and then look at your suggested bid. If you're trying to bid $3 on a keyword, like kind of do the math on your profitability, what your conversion rate going to need to be, um, maybe start with long tail, but it's also relative. I mean, you get really good suggested data on bids, things like that. Kind of look at it, do the math on your conversion rate before you start PPC. And then you can optimize way more effectively. Um, other big thing is don't make decisions too soon. Like uh, we've kind of all mentioned, a lot of emotional decisions can be made right now. You'll see a 200% ACOS <laughs> one day on a 20% average campaign. So definitely just look at the data and make um, smaller changes and see how it affects it. Don't make anything crazy changes based off a 24 hour period. Nice, all right. Uh Shri, did you have any quick tips for starting a PPC right now? Yeah, just exactly what Destiny was saying, like just starting with a small group of keywords and really focusing on like keywords as an investment. So where can you invest in ad history? Because you want to use them as a tool to send the algorithm strong signals. So pick the keywords that are really modified and can describe your product well. Make sure that you are using the keywords that convert at the highest rate and investing all the resources you have in those few keywords so you can build good history on them and organic rank. Um, you know, just really, I think the main thing is don't overlook your detail page. 
in many levels. Like right now, like our whole next month, you know, we do quarterly strategy. Our whole next month for our in-house, and we have an ad agency, is focused on SEO and enhanced brand content. Because when you're trying to double mm -hmm. down on profitability, you need organic rank to absorb some of your, you know, your PPC costs. So you you can use the PPC data, like your search term report, to inform your SEO strategy and your back end. But don't overlook SEO because you don't want to pay for every single click to your detail page. You want to make sure that it's a good balance. So utilize your ads to push up your organic rank, your ad history, your algorithm history, your relationship with the search engine, and treat it as an investment. So pick the right keywords and stay there. Don't try to bounce around. Uh, I wouldn't suggest starting with auto. I think auto gives you um, this false sense of ease, like it's just an easy place to start. But you know, it's not. It's not an easy place to start because you have zero control over where the targeting is at you're getting a lot of remnant traffic you're getting a lot of yeah, placements that say. aren't good yeah it's just bad yeah. so like if you're starting out pick your keywords carefully using a tool like helium 10 and then just really get in there and and sort of wrap yourself around them and focus on seo learn about seo focus on your detail page enhanced brand content focus on video not only running it in the ads but get it into your store get it into your pages like any kind of persuasion method you can use don't think that the ads will solve the problem. They just bring more visitors to your page. You want to make sure you get every single dollar you can out of those visits and every bit of juice from the algorithm out of those visits. Something to yes. kind of build off that real quick with the auto and the manual campaign. Um, a recommendation I kind of make is, of course, start with manual. But if you go to start a manual campaign, like look at your suggested keywords. If it's a really, really clean list, then there's a good chance that Amazon is indexing your SEO and you're probably ready to start an auto campaign. If you go to start a manual campaign and they're suggesting like off the wall pro products and keywords that aren't relevant, then don't start an auto campaign because you're mm. obviously not telling Amazon what you should be showing up for. That is a great tip for yeah. checking to see if you're ready for, for auto. Thank, thanks for I, that, Destiny. Yeah. Also on work. that, I would also say with auto campaigns right now, we, we've we also tested on some new because we're doing a lot of product launches right now too. auto mm -hmm. campaigns are being served. The, the bid prices across a lot of categories right now are all over the place. And the when you pull those search term reports, it's a lot of stuff that is completely irrelevant, mm -hmm. even if you have a yeah. fully optimized list. So I, for our team, we, we manage it. So we're actually kind of holding off on autos or we're doing very low, low bid autos. Low bid autos. We're That's not using gonna it for keyword research. We're using right. it more for very highly targeted manual campaigns right now. And we're highly focused on placements right now. Because yes. the biggest thing right now is everything has changed. Placement bids has become even a bigger factor because the conversion rates on the different placements, it, it plays such a huge factor when it comes to tacos like you were talking about, Cherie. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think that's the biggest thing. And, and a big part of it too is you know, as an individual seller, as a seller working with an agency, the most important thing is tacos. It's understanding yeah. your actual profitability because mm -hmm. with these giant swings, the attribution windows, it's not perfect. Like, like, you know, Destiny, you were saying one day it'll literally be 200%, but that same ad on that same keyword two days later is actually 50% or 30%. We're seeing some giant swings in some accounts, especially ones that are in merchant fulfilled and FBA. So it's important not to make two draft decisions too quickly um, yeah. as you're doing that and take really small subsets of the keywords to really focus on on where they're being placed. Yeah, one thing I've been uh, pushing here, at, you know, at directing the, the PPC uh, tool is letting people know that it's really a, advertising is a cost saving business, right? You just have to factor that in. So if you look at what your PPC costs are and then what and what your total sales end up being, that really gives you a better gauge. Um, obviously when you're first starting out, you don't have any of those, those numbers yet. So you want to make sure that you're watching everything like a hawk. I wanted to jump to the next question because it's about, it's about optimization. So, you know, we typically, we look at it, in regular times, is there a, a recommended, uh, period of days that you wait to do optimizations, uh, to a campaign? Uh, and is that changed? Has that shifted, uh, based on what's happening right now? I can start on that. Who wants to go? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Go for it. I mean, I think it's about doing your work up front, which is why you're on this session because you're gonna you're gonna use Helium 10. If you do your work up front, and you're you know really limiting your keyword group set, and you're really focused on the right keywords. Um, you know, I do think, you know, it's, it's really going to be up to you, you know, wh where that view is at and, and where you want to push, 
but I think it's it's more about investing in those keywords as long as you can. So I think if you pick the right keywords up front, you know, you shouldn't have as much movement as you think, you know, like within a keyword set, like your core keyword, it gets harder as you get bigger. So if you're just, you know, starting out here, you're in a great spot to just kind of lock it down and get mm -hmm. started. I mean, as you build a big campaign with thousands of targets and different placements, yeah, then it's just, you know, you're <laughs> optimizing quick and, you know, and different timeframes. But I think your initial keyword set, you know, it's, it's like Warren Buffett, like you just want to go the long view, like lifetime, like, you know, like yeah. it's just get in there and stay there because it's just your keyword, right? I mean, unless the language changes, they're not going to change how they search for your product. So get what you can off of those keywords. So I do think like, you know, going through those keywords and then and then looking at the data set, um, you know, normally I look at versus timeframes. Let's clarify that because that is helpful because I want to remember I'm speaking to a newer audience. I think like it's it's less about the time frame and more about how many clicks. It's more, mm -hmm. it, just remember that in optimization. It's not about seven days or 14 days. It's about like the volume of traffic on that keyword, like how many mm -hmm. clicks, you know, have come across a 24 hour period. I, I do all of my optimization based on click threshold, right? I do it based on, on the number of clicks, you know, the number of conversions before I look at conversion rate, like you're really looking at, at, at the actions that have been taking place. You're not so much looking at like what happens in 14 days. You can make a decision on a keyword after 10 clicks if you want to, or right. 20 clicks or 30 clicks, right? On Amazon, you get such a high conversion rate. You can do it at 10, um, you know, 10 clicks. You can look at a keyword and decide if you're going to kill it or not. And then if it's going good, you can run it 20, 30 clicks. But I would say to move away from timeframes, because you could bleed a lot of cash on a high volume keyword going like a seven day time frame when you really only need a certain amount of click data to make a decision. You right. don't need days. You know, you just need the data of like you drove a certain amount of people on that keyword, which is why auto is a wild card. You know, keywords are great because you know that so many people came from this keyword and this placement to this ad to this page and then you can make decisions on how that keyword performed and do it based on clicks don't give it a bunch of time because then that's just you're just burning cash and again focus yep. on profit don't burn any volume ads. volume definitely plays a major factor yeah you know, <laughs> Absolutely. Every keyword's different, right so it's just the clicks there's no time frame anyone else and uh, on top of that i would i would also say don't be afraid to kind of throttle up faster it, when you're launching these new campaigns and you're testing and doing these manual campaigns, you really want your ad rank to be recognized by Amazon. There mm -hmm. are so many ads going over these top targeted terms. If you kind of just dilly dally and you put in the low bids, what you'll find if you look at your placement reports is you're basically just on product pages and you're getting really low converting clicks and you're just wasting money. So if you're not really committed and, and that's a perfect point, Sheree, because really you want to make sure that those terms, maybe it's five, maybe it's 10, but you are pot committed to them and you're committed to letting those run. And the reason for that too, Amazon rewards you with click-through rates, your performance with click-through rates, having relevancy. And then on top of it, it's really important. You'll actually see your bids and your average bid rate go down over time. So make sure you're committed to it. Don't just say, oh, well, if it doesn't work out after 10 clicks, I don't know if this is good anymore. Just turn it all off because that's just kind of a, a wasted endeavor and it could have actually worked out in the long run. Yeah. Yeah. Especially with CPCs being lower right now, this is a great time, you know, yep. to be testing. You know, you, you, I know it's on, it's, it's, it's going back up to, to normal, but I think this is a great time for people to, uh, to be getting in there and, and doing their initial testing uh, and looking Absolutely. at volume, obviously. Um, we've only got like four minutes, but I did want to just bring up this one question by Madam Butterfly, um, which we kind of, I know I love that name. So if you're out of stock and you've been there for some time, did you guys uh, suggest switching off your PPC or just lowering the budget to almost nothing, but keep it running? Your campaign will turn off. So it kind of depends on your campaign mm -hmm. structure. If you're running your sponsored product. one campaign with 90 different ASINs and it's your top ASIN and you're seeing a crazy change in conversion rate, I would probably pause. But in general, I don't recommend running multiple ASINs within a campaign. It makes your reporting much more complex. It makes your indexation indexation much more complex. So your campaign will turn off the moment you go out of stock. Yep. Then come back on when it's back. <laughs> Caveat yeah. though, be really careful what happens with FBA. Sometimes they magically find a few units. And then mm. if the bids are remain there, you'll see a spike with all this traffic. Amazon's ad algorithm does not catch up to its inventory. So you'll find that there's like hour periods where you're literally just getting clicks and they're going to a page that they can't buy. So pay attention for sure. And one more tiny note on, on that, like when, when the campaigns go down, don't get the, the misconception that you can like put a different ASIN or a different 
shipping or different anything within a campaign that's got history. So if you yeah. have this awesome campaign to just this this one product that's just rocking, and then you think, oh, this variation's out, so I'm going to take that campaign yeah. and throw no. these terrible selling variations in there, or this <laughs> one that's shipping, you know, merchant fulfilled in there. Don't do right. that. Like pause the campaign that's golden until you're back in stock and put a new campaign together for the stuff that you're going to test. Don't try to put like you know, ASINs or products that sell less in your Rockstar campaign and think, because you will um, impact the the history and the scoring negatively. And then it's going to impact your good stuff when you're back ready to go again. Right. The one caveat for the, for the paused uh, uh, campaign on its own and then starting on its own, that is just limited to sponsor products. So if you guys are running sponsor brand ads, uh, it does not do that. What it'll do is uh, because sponsor brand ads just look at all your products. If it's to a store or different page, it's looking at all those products. So your sponsor brands might still run. Those you should pay attention to. But if you're running sponsor products, single ASIN, you shouldn't really have to worry about it because it's going to shut off on its own and, and turn on um, on its own. So um, let's see. Oh, we've got one minute left. Uh, uh, did Bradley oh, finish eating? Cameo. He, he we did. got some more time. We got some more time here. That's why I, I sent a message. I wasn't sure if you guys saw. We're, we're going to go to uh, about 650 on this. So, so nice. um, you know, if if uh, people are too uh, shy to give their questions, Vince, you know, I know you can can give us some good questions here. So No, absolutely. I'm just trying to figure out where this Madam Butterfly was so that I could hide it again. There oh, it yeah. Is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean, this, so, this is the questions that we're getting right now. What's for this is not the kind of PPC. When I said, please give me your questions, guys, this is not exactly. People are giving, him, rec <laughs> people are giving um, him recommendations. Yeah. Give the people <laughs> what they want, Bradley. <laughs> did did you do Lauren's yet? Uh, uh, yes, we did. We, we kind of okay. covered that. Yeah, we did. One thing I just wanted to ask is uh, what do you guys, what are you suggesting you're doing for your clients right now that have, you know, that are essential, that are selling really, really well, right? Um, are there certain strategies that you're employing to get them ahead in this current climate? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be our job. <laughs> yeah, that, anything specific that, that you think would be interesting to, to share? Um, one of the biggest things, especially for people who have never had AMS slash advertising console is, you know, how product display ads and Amazon is kind of a unique marketplace in that it still shows anything out of inventory or with crazy shipping delays on page one. So mm. if you're an essential and you have inventory and you have a great lead time, target the crap out of all of the products that are out, um, target with your product display ads that are underneath the buy box. If you have AMS and ad console, you have copy. You have Seller Central and you have the beta rollout for product targeting, use them. It's one of the strongest converting ad types from what we've mm -hmm. seen. It does incredible because it's a great placement. And if you have a competitive mm -hmm. advantage, you know, you have subscribe and save, run a coupon, throw your ad under there and crush it and win market share, especially if you're subscribe and save and have a lot of brand loyalty. It's a great opportunity. I would agree. We're all about that. I think that's super awesome. <laughs> and I think like another piece on that though, on that ad unit is really just not only using those placements at this point for conquesting. It's awesome to conquest because you know, it's like my favorite thing to do. But at the same time, it's equally great right now to to use the new brand analytics feature to see what's going on with the, the basket analysis and kind of look at what is going in from your own catalog into their, into their cart and then what they're actually comparing in your catalog and then putting those products products for upsell, cross-sell potential. I think that's like for every dollar you spend in ads on a best-selling product, you can upsell the second product. Um, and it's just free dollars into your cart because we know people love to use their cart on Amazon to put mm -hmm. everything in it, right? So like really don't overlook using those placements on the detail page right now for upsells and cross-sells. And I think that's one of the things that we're doing right now, because again, we're just trying to make every dollar count. Mm -hmm. And also it, it protects your real estate on your pages from other people conquesting, but at the same yeah. time, you're putting dollars in your pocket and you're kind of blocking, uh, you know, their moves to come onto your pages. Mm -hmm. All I, right. I think that's, um, that's, ahead, that's the best thing. Just one to just kind of go on that point. It's not about conquesting right now. And that's kind of a big thing that we preach. You have to protect your brand right now because there's plenty of big brands in some of these big categories where these big brands are just dumping money and it's kind of frivolously. So if you're not careful, you're going to end up losing positions even on your own search terms, which at this time is just catastrophic. Yeah. So you really got to be proactive with your own brand and protecting your brand. And we do big brands here that 
put a ton of money into outside media, right? So they're buying, yeah. media, they're on podcasts, yeah. you know, they're paying for all these placements and these people are flooding to Amazon. And, uh, you know, we have to spend so much time defending those detail pages because, you know, we can't allow them to spend money on outside media and brand building. You know, I mean, some people, you know, spend everything from television all the way down I mean, really expensive ads. And then, you know, they're coming to Amazon, eight out of 10 shoppers look for a better deal there. So, yeah, I would say that just exactly what Robert's saying, like really hedging and protecting your detail page. And then, like Destiny's saying, that that placement right below the buy box, whether you get it out of AMS or the new uh, sponsor display beta, um, it rocks. It's it's a great little placement. And you can mm-hmm. also do sponsored brands right now. I think, you know, I don't know how much mm-hmm. out of beta for everyone else, but we have it. Sponsored brands right there, dead center on the detail pages. And then you could build the whole carousel up, you know, below with your your pages, your, with your, your products. And um, super good strategy just to get that card up. You'd be shocked how much more money you can make. And as a reminder, the last last part really quick here, uh, guys, this is the first group of people who actually nobody other than Vince, of course, has been on the serious sellers podcast. Uh, (laughs) So what we do on that podcast, Uh how how do I end it? Vince, like, what do I ask them to give me the, uh, the impressions game? Not, not, oh, the, no, no. not, not the search, yeah, volume, the search game. volume game. Search volume uh, game? We do that. Yeah, we need to do that too, but we'll, we'll do that That's another time. But we another give time. the, uh, what we call the, which is TST 30 second ah. tips. Well, I haven't asked anybody else to do this today, but since you we got the, uh, the, the real, the real, real, uh, you know, it's creme de la creme of PPC here. I want each of you to think really quick about something you can say in 30 seconds or less, like a tip that's very uh, actionable, very valuable uh, relating to PPC for mm-hmm. our users. So who wants to go first? I'll go really quickly because I was about to say it before you. you All right, you Vince, let's in. do it. It's simply What's that, that, it is simply that uh, a lot of the ad units that we've been talking about just right now, you can only get if you're brand registered. And 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 so make sure you're, you're trying to do that as best you can, that you're going to get your sponsor brand ads, you're going to be able to do the sponsor display. So get brand registered. All right, Destiny. Utilize your custom image beta for your headline search ads. They are doing fantastic. They take off the majority of page one. They tell your brand story. Custom creatives is the future of sponsored right now. It's giving us more ad inventory. Invest in your creative team. All right. You might have just taken Cherise. I don't know. Uh, Robert. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, really right now, I would say dive into sponsored brands as much as you can and start A and B testing your stores, your store pages, start testing what's converting, what's not actually be hyper focused. Don't do all these broad and phrase campaigns that's just sending traffic and mixed results, but really have hyper focused store pages to really understand your true conversion metrics. Because right now, sponsored brands are converting at an unbelievable rate, but you just have to be have a really focused strategy. All right. Last but not least, Cherie. Man, I have to talk about competition, even though this is not a conquesting thing. I have to talk about <laughs> conquesting because it's my favorite thing to do. And so I could not be the cowgirl if I didn't say something about competition. So my thing would be if you're picking those keywords that we told you, man, you got to pick those few keywords and go all in on them, right? I would say that you want to look at the ASINs that are already ranked on just those keywords and make sure you put product targeting on just those those pages. So keep a a tight, like kind of what I would call a consideration loop. So you want to be like, you know, you're, you're here in search. You may not be able to outrank one of these top selling products. They get the click, but then you're on their detail page. So all you're fighting for is to be one of the five to seven brands in consideration. So I would say tie your keywords to placements on just the detail page uh, for the top three, you, you know, the top three competitors on each keyword and just hold those positions too. And it's a great way to, to scoop up a little market share. Cool, cool. All right, before you guys go um, one by uh, one, by one um, just uh, let people know how they can contact you or you know to reach out if they have more questions. Let's go uh, first with Destiny. Yeah, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, or betterams.com. All right, Robert? LinkedIn, Robert at etailrocket.com or just go to etailrocket.com. All right, Sheree? Theurbancowgirl.com. The urban All right, everybody throw up your helium 10, your 10, uh, 10 fingers here. And we're going to take a quick screenshot. I think Cassandra or someone's going to do it. All right, cool. All right. Thank you guys uh, so much. Uh, gave you guys a little bit extra time because I knew that this would be uh, fire. Content. Right? <laughs> thank you guys. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks take for Thank you for coming at such a strange time. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you guys. Appreciate Bye. you coming. Bye. You guys doing.